Charity Crafts here in the UK. Welcome to the next installment of the Craft Along with the Lind Williams Layering Frames Collection. I shall do a little bit of waffling until we see a few people come here. So we've got some eyes in the room. Um, it's lovely to have your company. Um, yeah, we're going to have a lovely couple of hours putting um, set number five through its paces. Hopefully you can hear me. I've got the, the microphone up here this evening because I'm wearing a jumper. A little bit cold, although it's quite warm in the studio this morning. So I may this morning, this evening. <laughs> so there's no windows. Um, good morning. Good. Oh, I've got a habit of because it's Groovy Tuesday, um, but it's not. It's Friday evening and it's 7 p.m. here in the UK. And I can see we've got some lovely friends in the room already. We've got Helen, we've got Mandy, we've got Sharon. Good evening, evening, evening. I'll have to keep saying good evening. Um, yeah, it's just force of habit, isn't it? And we've got a lovely Ken in the room, um, Pat Hoskins. Um, we shall have the lovely Grace in the room as well with us this evening, um, all the way from New York. So if you have any questions, she's there to help you out. Um, see, we've got Shari's in the room, Jane Telford. Here we go, everybody's coming in for hopefully an evening we we'll all enjoy. We'll just chill out for a couple of hours and we'll put the Celtic collection from the lovely Linda Williams, um, whose very special birthday is today. Um, so I'm sure by now she must have had a, a, a lovely day um, celebrating her birthday. So, um, yeah. Really looking forward to this evening. It's been a, a busy few days up at Create and Craft. I hope some of you managed to, to tune in. Um, Wednesday evening, we had the launch of the brand new one day specials. So oh, <laughs> we had the lovely launch of the one day special of those um, aperture dies. Then last night, we launched the final collection of the Linda Williams layering frames. And that was the um, Greek collection. And we also had that lovely little sampler plate. As I say little, it's an A4 plate, isn't it? That should be my all clear from Grace. Sound is good. Thank you very much, Grace. Um, so yeah, Celtic craft along, as Ken said. Didn't think of it that way. And it's Linda's birthday. How great is that? Um, so yeah, so, and then, um, yeah, it's going to be one of those evenings where I'm going to forget what I'm saying or I'm going to be talking gobbledygook. So let me show you what we're going to be working towards this evening. And I've, I've got a few twists and turns to, to showcase on this. So this is using the lovely Celtic harp. And we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to add a little bit of, if I come in on this one, just here. You'll see it's got some lovely gold paint, and that's using the Pebio um, acrylic paint on there. So we're going to put those that through its paces this evening, and also, um, yeah, I've got some lots of different bits to share with you. Okay, so what we're going to need, Grace has just popped a, a lovely link up for us, um, which will take you to our website and allow you to download an ingredients list if you want to craft along with me this evening. Some of you maybe may have already done it and have worked through, um, but I thought we could work it through to, uh, work it through together. Um, oh, it's going to be a fun evening um, to make sure we've got everything. And maybe you're tuning in afterwards, because I know here in the UK, we have um, the lovely Children in Need um, event going on on TV. And we'll talk about that um, a little bit later because last night during the shack, um, Barbara launched a very special set of stamps and groovy plate. Um, but we'll have a look at those a little bit later. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit now and we'll just work through the list so that we can start to tick off those boxes. Now, which way am I going? I'm going to go this way. We're coming nice and slowly. Okay. So it's all about sort of having choices. So we've got Linda's um, layering frame set five, which is Celtic. 
But the place in particular we're going to look at is the Celtic harp, okay? And we may also need Linda's geisha in silk. If you haven't got that one, don't worry, it's not a problem. The starter kit, we need that because we've got the groovy tools in there, we've got the black mat. Um, if we're going for A4 parchment, then we will need the plate mate for the A4 square grids with extensions and tabs. Definitely going to need our groovy guard. A4 parchment, bigger is better. Um, Perga liner pencils, Perga color pens. Um, the Pergamino coloring essential kit. Now that contains your um, dorsum oil, your spot on sponges, your mix mats your blending nibs, and really importantly, the double-ended eraser, okay? Then blending pen with additional nibs, the Pebio acrylic paint, the pearl gold. And then in order to see the lovely white work, we're also gonna need our six mil ball tool and our 4.5. For me personally, I'm gonna go with the Pergamano embossing matte excellent, the pink matte. And then I'm gonna show you some options. If you're not at the Pico cutting stage yet, don't worry, because you can use the Pico circle dies to do the cutting out, okay? So it's all about having choices depending on how far you are on the groovy bus journey, okay? So Lovely Graces popped a link up so you can go to the website, download this, and whilst you're doing that and you're getting all your, your bits and pieces together, let me show you the plates from the Celtic collection. Okay, so I've got mine in my storage folder. I'm going to zoom out and now. I'm doing my groovy yoga up and down. There we go. So this is the, the lovely Celtic harp and this is the plate we're going to look at this evening. Okay, then also in this collection we have the Celtic waterfall. I love this, this square knot type of effect of the frame. And you can use bits of it, you can use all of it. And the, the lovely, I mean, it, this is just a lovely country scene with that lovely waterfall in the background. Then we have our dotted cross stitch entwined heart. I love this. Uh, Cause it's really like, you can see here how you have that lovely heart design there. But then if you turn it like so, it looks completely different. Okay. So then we're going to turn it around. We'll turn back in again. And then I've also got my companion plate that accompanies all of the, the various different collections. Now, if you didn't manage to tune into Create and Craft over the last couple of days, we launched the final collection um, of layering frames from Linda. And this was the Greek collection. Um, they will be available on the Clarity Crafts website at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning, um, if you wanted to go down that option. So you've got the Windmill of Mykonos. Then we have our lovely Santorini scene. And then we have the Dotted Cross Stitch Lemon Tree. And then we have our Companion Plate, okay? So that's just giving you a, not a heads up, I'm sure many of you have already tuned in and seen them already. Okay. In addition to that, what we also launched is to bring it all together is the A4 sampler plate from Linda Williams. And what it is, it's like a snapshot of each of the six collections. So the first row goes back to Christmas that we launched back in June. Then we had the Countryside Collection in July, the Oriental or Japanese Collection in August. Then we went further on our trip, well not further, we got closer to home, we went to Tuscany. Then the next one is the Celtic Collection. And then finally, the um, Greek Collection. And let me just show you a couple of little bit of artwork bits of artwork that Linda created just using these little samplers. I mean, these are just so exquisite using our doodle dies to put the frame around the outside. I'm gonna bring them in on this one, I reckon. Let's have a look. There we go. Okay, 
So we've got that one there. We've got that love. I mean, look at that. For quick and easy cards, um, this is fantastic, the sampler plate. The best is yet to come. Happy birthday. I can't really send this to Linda, can I? Because she made it herself. <laughs> um, and then we've got another one in it. So just making little notelets or just making these and having them to the side so that um, you've got cards good to go. And then I love what Linda's done with this one with the, the Oriental collection and the lovely red. You've got the cherry blossom on there as well. And then you've got this one, perfect. Uh, for Valentine's Day, coming up soon. <laughs> soon as you, before you know it, it will be, Christmas will be done and dusted, and then we move on to next year. Um, but look at those. Aren't they amazing? And I think this is my favorite one. The lovely little geisha in miniature. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. So that was just giving you a, not. Uh, it's not a sneaky peek now because it's all been released and sort of been shown. But let's have a look at some artwork from the Celtic collection. Okay. Whee. Let's have a look at these. So this has been. These have all been created by um, a lovely design team so the first piece is using that lovely celtic waterfall um, and this has been created by julie campbell see so just a little snapshot of just the image in the middle okay then this one is by the lovely josie davidson and josie introduced us to the this method of coloring of the like the pointillism if i bring this up closer so it's, we looked at this, I think, when we went to Tuscany and we did the craft along. So if you want to see how that's done, we created those lovely lavender fields um, using this technique um, introduced to us by Josie. Okay. Then the next piece is from Karen Jackson. And look at that. This is just gorgeous. It's a real sort of portal, isn't it? As if you're looking out of a, a lovely window and then you've got that seam within it so maybe you've got other plates in the collection or just other um, plates in your stash these frames are perfect for so many different occasions then the next one is from Glynis and this is using that lovely um, dotted cross stitch entwined heart okay then we've got a piece from Linda herself and that lovely, this is on clear parchment, coloured in from behind, and then the background is on our green parchment. Then moving on from that, we've got this lovely corner with the Irish blessing, and this one's from Julie Campbell. Lovely. Uh, the corners for me, they just work. I mean, look, you just play around with it, and that bow. Then we've got another one. This one is from Linda. And you can see now how the frames wrap around beautifully. Okay. And the next one is from Karen Jackson. So Karen's done the same. Let's compare the two. Because it it's amazing how it, they're using exactly the same designs. So we have this lovely... Celtic frame here. Linda's just pico cut all the way around the outside and used white work to create this. And then Karen has actually gone in and pico cut in between all of the areas, but then she's colored it brown. It looks more like a, a wicker basket weave. Okay. And then I love this one. This Celtic heart. And then this is from the Christmas collection all the way back in June. Isn't that amazing? I love that frame. 
Um, and then final one is from June. Yeah, so I took one out because it, it was Linda's. Week. So this one is also from Julie. And Julie has used that bow. She's used some of the decorative elements there. And then this is on two different layers. The artwork from the design team, it really does make it so much more easy for me to present these products on TV. Not only do you have the stunning designs from Linda, but the artwork created by the design team. So let's pop this to, to one side. I need to pop this somewhere safe. Right, okay. I need a slurp of coffee. This, this hot coffee will last two hours in here. Thank you, Mr. Ken. Okay. Are we ready to craft? Who's going to craft along with me this evening? Um, have we got anybody new to the room? Never know. So what we're going to do, I'm going to start off with my Celtic heart plate. Okay. Isn't it funny? It doesn't matter how much space you've got in your desk, you've never got enough room. Okay. Right, so let's have a look on, on the overhead. So if we look at Linda's piece of artwork, okay, that she's created, let's turn the plate round the other way. Okay. So what Linda's done, she's taken several of the different, she's just taken away the outer frame to create this piece of artwork. Okay. So this is where we, we have options. Linda has Pico cut round the outside by hand. Okay, so when you have a look at the piece, I'm sure I've got one here. Here we go. Here's one that's been deconstructed. Coloured on the back, and we're going to have a look at the colouring on the back because it was quite interesting. When I showed this sample last night to Yanis, um, Yanis thought that it had been Pico cut in between but it hadn't, it's just using pencils, okay? So we've got choices. If you want to do the Pico cutting, okay, then you'll need an A4, well, you're definitely gonna need an A4 piece of parchment, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the larger frame around the outside. But what I'm gonna do for this evening to cater for people to give choices is I'm going to take our Pico circles, okay, which we also have. Let me just grab those. So I've taken our Pico dies, like so. Okay, so this is a groovy plate. Let me just take the groovy plate out because it's easier just to show you. Running out of space. So if I lay that on top, okay. So the one that I've chosen is the second one in on the groovy plate, okay. The outer one will just about go inside this area here, okay. So you could still use the larger one and then just adapt it on your design. But for me, I thought we'd keep it nice and easy and we'll go with the second one in and do this, okay? Now you can, you don't all need to rush off and sort of die cut your piece of parchment. You can do the die cutting afterwards, okay? It's entirely up to you on, I mean, ideally you pico, you die cut first, but you do have that option to go back in afterwards and do that, okay? So, Working on the back of the parchment, I'm going to take my tumble dry sheet and I'm going to wipe outwards from the centre of the parchment. Now, top tip, I know I give it out all the time, but I never do it myself. But it is a good thing to, to know. Wipe the, the parchment first and then die cut. Okay, and then you haven't got to worry about that. So we're going to look at the plate. We need to be able to read the word groovy on the back. Now, it doesn't matter because we're, we're just tracing out as it comes. The plate can be in any direction, okay? We're then going to take our Pico circle 
and we're going to position that centrally. Okay, we're going to take our groovy tabs to hold our work in place so it doesn't move. I reckon, excuse my head for a minute while I just lean over slightly just to make sure that it's perfectly positioned. Groovy tab in place, like so. I've got my groovy guard on hand. And what we're going to do, we're going to keep it nice and simple and we're going to trace out with the number one tool that comes in the starter kit. Okay? Nice and easy. I'm going to put my glasses on. Eyes are definitely going as it gets later in the evening. And all we're going to do is push into the groove and trace out the frame. Okay. Now for me, I prefer to do all the lines in sort of one direction first because I don't know it's a little bit more satisfying to do that. And you're you're not twisting and turning the play and it makes it a little bit faster. Okay. Now for those of you that um join me on a regular basis on Groovy Tuesday, you would have seen earlier in the week that I used our Pergamano metallic gel pens to trace out this. And I also did it on TV as well. I did it um, yesterday and this morning. And I've got that piece of artwork somewhere, which I'll share with you later. Um, so if you wanted to use, if you've already got the gel pens and you wanted to do that, then this now becomes the front, if that makes sense. Okay, now we're just going to take the tool and we're going to work our way all the way around this design. Okay, now another option, if you have gone for the complete collection of the Celtic layering frames, is that you could use a square one instead of a circle one. And you could also use the Pico squares to cut out. Okay. So there's a question there. What has that question got? Pat Coombs, I'm still keeping my fingers crossed that the groovy tools one and two, three and four will be in pink handle soon. Wow. Um the reason the groovy tools are wooden handled um, is because when we introduced the groovy system, we were already aware of the Pergamano tools. And Pergamano had a number of tools that would work within the grooves already. So what we didn't want to do was replicate. I mean, this was before we even owned Pergamano. Okay, so, so the decision was made to do them in different sizes. You can still use your Pergamano tools within the, um, the grooves. But for me, I'm sort of, I was brought up on the, the start the groovy system rather than the Pergamano system. So for me, I still prefer to use the wooden tools. Now you can get um, grips, pen grips on there um, if you find that more comfortable. I know a number of our design team and also Tina Cox, she also um, uses the uh, pencil grips as well. So now I've done all of that one. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is come in and do this curve. This curve is in covered up with groovy tab so we can work our way around i'm also going to do this as well. and that groovy tab is being naughty because it's moved but it doesn't matter because it all slots back into place there we go where was i here we are let's go in and then 
Let me grieve if I... Oh. I just caught my jumper on the um, Pico edge and it moved the parchment. But it doesn't matter, does it? See, this is where the groovy guard comes in because now I'm covering up that Pico edge. Goodness me. So how's everybody been? How's the weather been with everybody? Um, it was nice and sunny driving back from TV land this morning, but now the temperature's really dropped. Um, it's quite fresh. I reckon there may be a light frost on the car by the time we finished here this evening. Um, isn't it funny how it is, can sort of just change just like that? But it has been dry. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Gonna work around. Don't forget if you've got any questions, feel free to ask them. And if I miss them, um, I mean, Grace is in the room to help. Jane Telford's in there. Lovely Glynis. I think I saw Carol Baker in there as well. So there's plenty of help in the room if you've got any questions. And we're just going to go all the way around, just like so. All right, so I've come to my groovy tab, so I'm just going to reposition that on over to here so we can continue with the design. And if you find that when you're working um, on the parchment, you get maybe you get a little bit of resistance. Um, just give it another wipe with a tumble dry sheet, and you will definitely notice the difference. Okay, so all we can do it doesn't take long, does it? See, for me, this is the beauty of the, the groovy system be able to achieve something easily, which traditionally would have taken a lot longer. Okay. And I love how when you're working with the design, just the pure fact that you're pressing into the groove and you can see it come to life. You can see it illuminate the, the parchment. Okay, I think I've got one more bit. I just need to move the groovy tab just here. So add in that final section. Do I have a favorite set from this collection? Mm. I'm not sure. It, I'm, I'm saying I'm not sure. I am sure. There's always something new that I see. I think, hmm, that's my favorite. No, that's my favorite. Um, I think it depends what mood I'm in and what frame of mind. But the, these lovely Celtic frames are really, really nice. Yeah, that was interesting, wasn't it, Shari? Um, with Yanis last night, um, during the, um, I think it was the four o'clock and the eight o'clock, um, he said, um, he said, oh, he said, Linda's made this collection especially for me. He said, um, he said, because he was half Greek and half Irish. I didn't know he was half Irish either. Um, and it was funny, and I said to him, oh, go on then, Yanis, it's all about you, 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 isn't it? Sort of thing. Um, but it's that connection. So it said that when he looks at the Celtic collection, it reminds him of his dad. And when he looks at the Greek collection, it reminds him of his mum. So it's having those triggers um, that sort of just adds to the design element. Um, so yeah. So let's have a look at what we've got here. Okay, so I can lift it away. And here we have a lovely frame. Okay, so I've turned it over. 
and that we're looking at it from the front. Now I mentioned those gel pens, didn't I? Where did I put that bit of artwork? So this would be an alternative option. Okay. I'll put some white underneath. That would definitely help. There we go. Ta -da. So this is using the gel pens and it gives it that lovely um, metallic luster. I'll bring it in on this one. No good at wiggling at the camera. There we go. I think you can. There we go. It's just getting the angle, isn't it? <laughs> so you've got options now. So you may have wanted to go down this route because you can still do your white work even though you've used the gel pens. But we're going to go down this road this evening and just build up the design. Um, maybe I'll, I'll give a little demo for those of you that missed it, maybe. Although I did do it a couple of times on TV. But not everybody watches TV. So let's pop those to one side. Now we're going to bring the, the plate back into play. And now we're going to add in the lovely flowers and the harp. Okay. So reposition your piece of parchment. Goes back into the slots. Attach it with your groovy tabs. Now I'm going to use a couple extra groovy tabs because it's sort of the heat of my hand is causing it to curl up a little. Okay. So that. But this frame, you can put any design in this frame now because that's exactly what it is. It is a frame. So I'm going to stick with the number one tool. We're going to keep it nice and easy. So press into the groove and continue with the design. Now, another thing I, I love about the groovy system is it doesn't matter what direction you go. Um, You can go up, down, you can go round, you can go left to right, right to left. It's just, you're just holding a, a pen, really. Those lovely little dots there. Just like. Uh, continue with this. Oh, it's amazing. Um, on that A4 sample plate, there's a lovely, it's a heart, but just in miniature. And the detail is not lost at all, even though it's been made a lot smaller. Just love. This is perfect for a Friday evening after a couple of days up at TV just to share the evening with some friends and just get in the groove and just chill out. Isn't it? And it's great to have everybody's company. It really is. All the way around. See, it just flows. And I don't need to... I'm not thinking about what it is I'm doing. Because Linda has done all the hard work for us. Okay. I often get asked, where do you start? Do you start at the top? Do you start at the bottom? I don't think about where it is I'm going to start. I just go in for it. 
because it's not as if it's sort of like you're stamping out and you've got to stamp this bit and that bit and we're just taking the design exactly how it comes and don't forget if you maybe this is the first time you've tuned into a craft along all of the previous craft alongs from the the layering collections are all available on our youtube page in addition to that the, the Clarity YouTube page is a vast, vast library of free knowledge and information. You've got the original um, YouTube Tuesdays from Barbara from back in the day when it first, when YouTube, Barb started doing YouTube. Um, then you've got all of the Shack episodes in there. Um, you've got all the Groovy Tuesdays. You've got all the craft alongs. You've got, what else is in there? There's loads of, of stuff in there. You can easily get, you can spend days over on the, the Clarity YouTube page. And the thing is, you don't need to belong to anything. You don't need to sign up. Um, but if you, are, if you are signed up, then make sure you subscribe and then you'll get notified when new things appear. Um, yeah, it's great. It's great, he says, with a high-pitched voice. I tell you, what, I've done so much talking <laughs> um, these last couple of days. I've got a croaky voice now. Question from Kay. Love the little mini cards. Which border dies were used? Hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. I would say that, right, okay, I know, even though Linda hasn't said on the back, okay, I know exactly which one Linda has used. She has used our nested doodle frame it's frames and panels die set. And the reason being is because this design, if it was the original doodle dies, this would only appear, you wouldn't have two different designs of the same size. So this one is the lattice, and this one is the chevron. Okay, there's five different designs to choose from. And I haven't got the dies to show you here in the studio. The reason being is because I got back from the TV and I just unloaded the car, and it's all sitting down in reception. I didn't have the energy to carry everything back upstairs. Um, but Grace um, could pop that link up, and I'm sure she can. Um, so that's the dies that we used. Um, okay, so let me, whilst we're having, let's have a look at that artwork, and I sh should be able to find it for you. Um, dum, dum, dum. Let me see, where's the keyboard gone? Um, nested. Doodle. Okay, it is. There we go. It's, this is the, the complete collection. Okay, just like so. I should be able to paste that in and send. Okay, that's a complete collection. Um, okay, and they're just available in squares. Okay, Grace has just texted me. Um, hopefully that link has just popped up. Why oh, is my nose sticking out? So, um, right, multitasking, multitasking, chatting with Grace, chatting with everybody in the room, finding a link. But that, so I posted the link to the complete collection, but they are available individually. Um, and um, just depends on budget. So, this one is the Chevron, and this one is the Lattice design. There's a polka dot, there's a film strip, 
and there's also a heart as well. So hopefully that helped. Super duper. Okay, so it's great to have interaction, isn't it? Really is. Okay, where was I? I was over here. I wasn't, I was down here, but there you go. See, framing the doodle dies in a way is similar to like Linda's frames because it's all about the, the finishing off and adding a frame, whether you use, I mean, the, the embedders. It's crazy that something so simple can be so effective. And I think, let me have a look. Yeah, okay. Let me show you on this camera here. Can you see how it's been indented in the car blank? I wonder if I get a better angle on this one. Whee, where am I going? It's quite difficult to see, but can you see how around the outside here, it's sunk in um, to the cart? And this is using our um, square and rectangle embedders. And it just gives that additional, it's harder to see on this camera, there we go. How they work, I think, I think, I think, I think, I might have some, but yeah. Here we go, clarity embedders. Um, and this is where it all started. It started with the squares and the um, rectangles. And what it does, it gives that lovely faux um, platen press effect in there. So it's all about the layering and the framing. So you've got that lovely little centerpiece there, framed with a doodle die, and then framed again with an embedder. But it, oh, it adds a little bit more elegance to it. So if you were selling your cards, just those two little finishing tricks can really make a difference on the price on um, the price that you sell them for. Okay, right. Let's go back to our lovely Celtic heart. Oh, I don't know where I've gone. All high pitched. I need a drink. <laughs> and when I say I need a drink, I need some coffee. And it is coffee. Don't look. Right, I'm going to spill it everywhere now. Lots of coffee in there. And add the thing to keep it. But it, you need to keep that open, really, because <laughs> it stays hot. I could probably come back to this in three hours of not drinking it with that lid open, and it will still be hot. It's the insulated um, mug that does it. And it is definitely very useful when we're doing a craft along for a couple of hours. Okay, so let's trace out. I bet you've all traced out your, your heart now, haven't you, while I've waffled and digressed. But that's all right. It's all about being in the moment, isn't it? And chill. The attention to detail that Linda puts into um, her designs um, is amazing. And Jazz in the office and Linda, they work so well together. I mean, Jazz is young and bright and she comes up with her own designs as well. And she's always learning and keen to learn as well. And it shows when you get the finished piece um, and you've got the, um, the prototypes to have a look at. And she turns them around so quickly as well. Amazing. Right, okay, so let's have a look at what we have. So we're just doing a slight variation on a theme 
to what Linda has done. It's still the same, it's just that I've taken one of the layers away. Okay, so if we have a look, so this is what I've just done. Okay, and then this is what Linda has done. So it's about having that versatility of the size of the card in what, in which, blah, 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 versatility about the size of the card. Okay, you can go small or you can go large. <laughs> okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at this shadow, this white work. Okay. So if I turn it over and we look at the back, now there's a combination of different techniques that we can explore for this. Okay. So what we're going to do for the white work is we're going to need our six mil and our four mil Pergamano ball tools. Okay. We're going to need my best friend when it comes to white work. And apart from Linda Williams, is my pink mat. And we're also going to, uh, where have I put that? And I haven't even packed my pink bag back up. A white pencil. A Pergamano B pencil. Okay. So, again, we're catering for people at different levels of being in their, um, being on that bus journey. If you're not ready to tackle white work, I'm sure everyone can colour in with a white pencil. Um, mm, yeah. Okay. Oh, Pauline, bless you. Oh my God, I thought I was set up for the evening, but just spent three quarters of an, the eve three quarters of an hour looking for fabric conditioner sheets. Thank goodness for the corner shop. Sit and relax now. Oh, bless you, Pauline. <laughs> oh, dear. It'll be all right on the night, as they say. You can go back and watch on Catch Up. Okay. So, pink mat. There isn't a right side or a wrong side. It's whatever side it lands. It really is. Okay. Let's move all these groovy tabs out of the way. Right, pink mat, we're still working on the back. And I'm gonna go with the embossing tools first. And if I don't know if you can see it, it looks a little bit misshapen. It's because the heat of my hand, okay, has caused it to curve. Okay, that's all it is. It's just the heat from my hand and I've got um, hand cream on there as well. So this is where the groovy guard definitely helps especially if you've got a jumper rather than a shirt the picos catch so i'm going to zoom in a little bit now so we can really indulge in this white work okay so we're going to zoom in and then i'll move the artwork to where it needs to be oh we've got the lovely clarity sue in the room as well good evening sue Okay, so let's bring this down. So when we look at the piece of artwork from Linda, let's take the finished piece of artwork because it will show better on that. Let me just grab that from over here. Okay, so what you can see, you've got like a real sort of shadow effect, haven't you? So it's whiter in the middle and lighter as it goes over and under as it weaves its way round, okay? So, sometimes it's a good idea to warm up with your white work first. Um, I know um, when I've spoken to Linda in the past, she rarely goes straight into her piece of artwork. Um, she'll warm up, she'll get her hand in a flow first, sort of like it's exercise. Okay, 
top tip there from Glynis. If your parchment curls, like mine has, um, stick it under your work mat overnight and it'll be fine in the morning. There you go. Top tip from Glynis. Okay. So let me explain something before I go into my piece of artwork. Um, what am I looking for? Where's it gone? Okay. Um, I'm going to practice on this one. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. When you're doing, you're using your ball tool. Okay. Oh. I automatically thought that the back of the ball tool needed to line up with the line okay so if I take the back of the ball tool and I line it up with this line running here okay if I take that what's going to happen is it doesn't touch that line so I'm going to go on really heavy just to show you what I mean if I go on really heavy see how I've got a space now in a way we do want that space to create the light and the dark effect. But if you didn't, what you need to do is place the middle of the ball on the line. Okay. And then when you start to push out or work towards you, you no longer have that gap. Okay. So the bigger the ball tool, you just need to be aware of where you need to position it to start off with. Okay. So let me just, I'm just going to get warmed up. I'm just going to do a couple of strokes. So what I'm doing, normally, um, when we're doing white work, especially on like flowers, you would start and you sort of flick up and then you flick away. I'm still doing that. I'm still lifting the tool away as I get further into the piece of artwork. Because what I'm also going to do is then turn it round and then come in from this side, like so. And it means I won't get a real bright white on there. I mean, I need a bright white in there, but I don't want it to look as if the two places join and meet. Does that make sense? Let me explain it with a colored pencil. So what I'm doing is I'm going here, but can you see how it's lighter as I flick away with the pencil? Okay, so it's definitely darker here, but it's lighter there. So then when I turn it round and I come in from here, so it's darker here, but now the two lightness together brings the darkness. Does that make sense? Or am I just waffling? <laughs> I could possibly just be waffling, but I don't think I am. I think it sort of makes sense up here, and hopefully it makes sense as I'm saying it. But if it doesn't make sense and you're not sure, ask, please. <laughs> That's a good way of showing it with a colour pencil, isn't it? Because it will always get darker where. I'm starting, okay. Gracie says it makes sense. Thank you, Gracie. <laughs> right, let's go back to my piece of artwork. Now this evening, we're not going to get all of this done. Um, we're just gonna do a section because I'm gonna do a section so that we can look at the, um, the black in the background and I also want to show the colouring on here and using the pearlescent paint to enhance the design okay because I would guess that this level of whiteness that Linda's created would have taken a couple of days of red like do a layer, let it rest, do a layer, let it rest. 
Okay. But there's some, um, I don't like saying the word cheats because it's not cheating, it's an alternative technique or method. I think when you say cheating, it, I think it's sort of one, it belittles what you're doing, um, and it shouldn't because it isn't, and it's just giving options of doing things differently. Okay. So I'm not cheating, I'm using alternative methods. <laughs> right, let's have a look at this section here. So I know, let's do it, that I need to sort of stay away from this edge. Let's get it at the right angle that I feel comfortable with. So if I put my finger there and I bring the ball to in, then I know I'm definitely not going to go anywhere near that line. Okay. So I'm going to do that one. So I'm going to do a couple all in the, the same direction first. And this is like our undercoat going down first. Okay. So we're just going to do a couple and turn it around and hold the tool so that it feels more comfortable for you. Okay, because you don't want to sort of, some people um, flick towards them, some people flick away from themselves. It's entirely, there's no rules, so you can't break them. Okay. We're just going to go along. So you can start to see, hopefully, that we're building up that base layer. Okay. I'm just gonna, just for speed, I'm putting a little bit more pressure on than I would normally, just so that you can see what's happening. Okay. Now if you find that, believe it or not, the, the ball tool is not resisting, but it's not moving as smoothly, then just take your tumble dry sheet and just give it a wipe again. Okay. Or wipe your ball. Just like so. Okay, so now I'm going to do a couple over here like this. And it doesn't take long once you get into a rhythm. How far am I going to go? All right, I get, yeah, we'll go up. I can't remember where I started now. It's that faint. I reckon we'll be all right. Oh, I need some nibbles. I haven't got any, oh, I haven't got any, I need some chocolate. No, I don't need chocolate, not while I'm working with parchment. <laughs> so now I'm flicking from there out. I'm going to turn round. Um, where are we? Okay, and now I'm going to start to, to flick inwards there. Okay. Just like so. Now, if you are new to embossing and or and or you're a little bit impatient like me, then it's quite reasonable to sort of do a base layer of white work like we're doing now. Okay. And what we're going to do is as we start to go round, no, as we say, once we put a base layer on all the way around, you can let it rest and come back to it and build it up in the traditional method. But this evening, about this evening, he says, I'm going to speed up that process by using a white pencil. 
okay and it's not cheating we've established that it is an alternative method <laughs> linda does it herself she's told me that she when um linda creates some lovely pieces of artwork and um she sends me through the instructions for me to so i can i know what to do when i'm replicating her artwork she'll say use a white pencil it's quicker and there are certain um designs that you can't do white work in because it's either too intricate or it's too delicate and by doing the white work it really wouldn't work so i know in the past for example say i wanted to do white work in between those two lines there okay parchment the the space in there is too tight for white work so you would definitely um have to use a white pencil for that question from richard if you let your parchment rest for a day or two would, would you need to rub rub it again with a tumble dry sheet before you start embossing um possibly uh, i'd say no because um for example all the pieces that linda created that linda jackson then staged up for me i didn't need to there was only a couple of places right when i was um replicating them on tv i needed to wipe and it would be down to the different tumble dry sheets um some have more um lubricant than others i tend to use ones from um mine are from sainsbury's um haven't bought any from tesco's haven't bought any from morrison's haven't bought any from anywhere else so from my experience these are quite um not oily they have a lot of moisture in them so i don't normally tend to have to go back in and wipe it again so it'll be just entirely down to the different tumble dry sheet from the different companies but i mean it takes a second doesn't it to, to rewipe it and it's if you find that you're getting resistance or it, you don't feel that it's going so smoothly then just give it a wipe really it, it's as easy as that but it's a really good question okay so now what you can see we're starting to build up those layers so i've put my i need to go in and do these little bits in here okay just like so and I'm just doing like a little up and down shuffle on those. Uh, where else are we going? Um, this one, just here. No question is ever a silly question. Um, and it's always good to ask, definitely. So now, if I turn it over, we can see, I wonder if I put uh, a piece of black card underneath. Can you see that better? Yeah. So you can see here, I haven't done any white work here, but I've started to add the white work here. And another thing, if you do go on too heavy and too fast, your parchment will buckle even more. Okay. So it's all about um, accepting the process and going with it. And it's. <laughs> Oh, it's easy for me to say to accept the process and go with it but if you're impatient like me it's hard to get your head around that okay but it is it's i think barb said it um a couple of months back when she was talking about doing white work you have to accept that is the process um and if you want to get the best result then you have to follow that process it's not a rule it is a process and it is a fact that if you leave a bigger space in between a time space in between each of the different layers you will get a better result i mean linda's artwork and they're on the design team's artwork answers that doesn't it And I saw a comment, is this Irish coffee? No, it's not Irish coffee. It's just good old Nescafe instant. 
if I was to have like, well, I don't have alcohol anyway, but if I was to have like the, those machine coffees, I would be buzzing by now or I'd be asleep. <laughs> right, okay. So what we're gonna do to enhance um, what we're doing, I now need to be working um, on a hard mat because I'm gonna use pencils. If I do it on the pink mat, the parchment will think the pencil is an embossing tool and try to emboss rather than color. Okay, so we're gonna move that out of the way. We're not gonna need the pink mat anymore. Chuck that over there. So now we're gonna have a look at some color and we're gonna just concentrate on this area here and we're going to do the white pencil and we're also going to do the black pencil as well we're going to do two for one on this okay so what i'm going to do first is i'm going to take a tissue i just saw someone was sneezing so who needs a tissue jane <laughs> uh, what we're going to do is just fold it into a square and then turn it into a piping bag of sorts. It's a cone, okay? Then I'm gonna take my spot on sponge that comes in the coloring accessories kit and some dorso oil, just like so. Looks like a pair of lips. Sorry, I've got to that stage now, it's stir crazy. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the oil onto the sponge, onto the tissue even, and we're now gonna wipe the back of the parchment. Now you could really, really load this up with dorso oil and it won't affect the parchment at all. So just putting this layer down, and what this is going to do, it's going to help the tools, uh, the tools, the pencils, work a little bit more efficiently to get that soft blend of colour. Now you can go straight on with the pencil first, um, but it's just another way of doing it. So what we're going to do first is we're gonna do the white areas. Okay, so if I have a look at this. So I'm gonna take my white pencil. Now I'm not gonna press hard. I'm just pressing lightly, okay? And I'm gonna go just in the central areas where we added the white work with the embossing tool, okay? And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do sort of half and half, I'm gonna leave half with just white work and half with the pencils, okay? Just so we've got a, a comparison. I'm gonna do that one and that one. And also another thing, which makes perfect sense, but I didn't realize until Barb mentioned this um, a couple of weeks back in the shack. When you're working with your B pencils, which are wax-based pencils, and also your polychromos, if you go on really heavy with the pencils in whatever you're doing, whether it be on parchment or whether it be on um, card, not only does it create the seal on the medium you're coloring in, but it also creates a seal on the pencil. So Barb's got like strips of um, sandpaper um, to take that um, sheen back off of the, the lead. Okay, so I'm gonna do the white first and in order to do that, I need my blending pen. Um, I need a nib. Okay. Now I think it was Glynis, Russell, Russell, um, not Glynis Russell, Glynis Whitehead. She had a top tip. 
when you're using the blending nibs, when you're using it with color, it's obvious what color you're using. But if you're using it with white, then you don't know that this is your nib for white. So what Kalinis suggests you do is you put a dot, a black dot on the stalk of your blending nib. And then when it's in the pot, you pull it out, you know that this one is for your white pencil. Okay. So we're going to dip the nib way too much. I need, I put too much on there. I'm going to swap the nib over and let it just evaporate on the nib. So now all we're going to do is blend in the pencil. Okay. Let me do that. So you can see how it's smoothing it out. Like so. Might be able to do it a bit better on this one. Yeah, there we go. And I'm I'm not going right in because I don't want to do that. So I'm now working my way around. And you'll notice I haven't gone back in. I don't really want a harsh line. So it's that same flicking effect with the nib. But can you see the difference already between the two? Okay. And then, so what we're doing is we're enhancing our white mark. So maybe you're coloring in a snowman um, and you're not sure how to do the white work on a snowman. Then you could put just an underlayer down using your ball tool and then use a white pencil and some dorso oil to intensify the whiteness. Okay. And you can build up the layers of the pencil. But can you see the, the difference now? So over here, it's just the white work. Um, and then with the pencil, it's whiter. So if I turn this over now to the front, you can see. Now I've still got a little bit of, um, for me, that's a little bit harsh. It doesn't sort of flow. So what I'm going to do now is just go back in and just, I'm sort of tickling the parchment now. Before, I was applying pressure with the, the nib. So now, I'm just tickling. And by tickling the parchment, it smooths it out even more. You see that? Or is it just my eyes going out of focus? Tickle, tickle, tickle your parchment. Like a, uh, tickling the parchment. Could that be a new technique, do you reckon? Tickle, tickle, tickle. I've definitely lost it now. Okay. Oh, dearie me. That's a lot better. I'm a lot more happier now that I've got more of a natural. That one needs a little bit more. There we go. Right. Okay. So we can see the difference by doing... I mean, I could still get this result using the ball tools. Um, but it's just a bit of a longer process. And it is the best process if you want to get something as beautiful as that. But not all of us have that time, do we? Um, because we want to make something to give to someone fairly quickly. Um, yeah, it's... 
it's choices. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the black B Pergoline pencil and we're going to go in to these areas here. Okay. In between the knots. Now, if you happen to go in the wrong place, then you can take your eraser pencil and remove it. So I nearly went into the wrong place a moment ago. Okay, so just light circular motions, not putting the pressure on. I'm going to change my nib from my white to my black. Okay. Church in this ticking pen. Mm, not saying anything, Mr. Ken. Okay. So I'm not going to put any oil on. I just want to try something. I want to see what happens if I dry them because I've put that undercoat down already of the dorsal oil. It's already starting to blend. Uh, what do I want? I want. So look. Right, I'm going to do this just to show you. Hopefully I can stay within the lines. Right, I definitely need to put a little bit of oil on my nib. Too much oil and it takes it away. But it's fine because I can go back in. I need to take the white paper out. Because I can go back in and build up the depth of the the black okay and because i've got these lovely nibs i can really get in to those small spaces in between the weaves okay so we're just going to blend in the black okay now, what Linda tells me is that when you do this for the first time, it can look quite grey. Okay, so a suggestion, if you're, you're going with what I'm doing here, for example, and you've gone for the Pico cut version rather than the going around and perforating it and then Pico cutting, what I'm going to do, I would put like a an arrow or just a white pencil mark to show this is where I've started. So by the time you go all the way around, okay, the black's obvious because the black is black, but when you're doing your white work, you need to know where you started and where you stopped, okay. And this you can rub out. So what you would do, I would say by the time you've done the black all the way around, these areas, it would have evaporated enough that I can now go back in with the black pencil. And this time, I'm definitely going to dry blend. Okay. So we're going to go in here, like so. I'm still not putting pressure on with the black. I'm still going in a circular motion. Okay. But because I've already put a layer of dorsal oil down first, then I've put the black down and then I've blended it with a blending pen. Okay. And then I'm going back in with just the pencil on top. But I'm not going on heavy. I'm still going on light as if I was going to blend it. So I'm not sealing the pencil. Now, what I would suggest is that you have... Um, oh, a bit over the top. Um, a brush okay 
because as I'm doing this, I can see I've got pigment coming off of the um, pencil. If I use my hand to wipe the dust away, I'm going to spread it, especially black. We don't want that. If I blow it, I'm likely to moisten <laughs> the parchment. So with the brush, you can't go wrong. Okay. Now let me turn this over and see if we can see the difference now. So this one here isn't as black. Okay. And these ones are definitely becoming blacker. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to finish applying the next layer on here. And then I'm going to take a dry nib and dry blend. Now you could, as an alternative, use the Pergamano um, Perga color pens and you'll get an intense black straight away. So it's all about working with what you have. And I'll show you that. I'll take the black pen shortly and I'll show you to that. Now for me, the pens, you just need to um, be a little bit more careful. So you've got double-ended nib, you've got a bullet tip okay and then you've got a fine tip so the smaller areas in here would definitely be with the fine tip and the larger areas would definitely be with the bullet nib okay now, what you need to be careful of when you're working with the, um, the Perga color pens, with the pencils, I can keep going over the same area. With the pens, because they have moisture to them, if you keep going over the same area, what happens is you get like a pilling of their fibers. Um, whee, drop the lid. Because um, the moisture is saturating the parchment okay now I definitely need I can see it here um, where's that gone there it is I definitely need to put some more pencil on this one okay so let's have a look now when I turn this over so there is the black pen and then this is the pencil so on white it does look quite grey, doesn't it? But Linda's artwork isn't on white card. It's on black card. So the black card will automatically intensify what you're doing. Okay. So we've had a look at doing this. And what I wanted to do was... So I've got my black nib. If you feel that you need to intensify maybe the, the darkness on the shadows here, I'm just going on very, very lightly with the black. The black pencil will always overpower. Okay. Now, this is a dry nib. So I just had to smell it to see whether there was any torso oil on it. Because what I want to do is dry blend. I don't want to put any oil on these areas here. Okay. And I'm just pushing that out into the white. Now this one I went a little bit too heavy on and it looks a little bit too regimental. But if you think, oh no, I've made a mistake, then 
all you need is your eraser pencil. So I'm going to use the, the pink end, which is softer, and then just light pressure, and it will just take off. It just knocks it back a little bit. If you think that you've gone a little bit over the top with the black in the ribbon. Okay. So. Oh, dear me. Are we all good? Are we having fun? Or is it just me? Am I just the only one having fun? <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sure I'm not the only one having fun this evening. Um, and these sessions like the Groovy Tuesday, um, when you're in the shack with Barb, um, for me, they're my downtime. Um, sort of enjoying what's going on, enjoying the company, enjoying the conversation, and answering the questions. I mean, that's what we're here for. It's all free. And especially with, with Groovy and Parchment, there's no way that for, for these sessions that you would get a whole project completed because what Linda's done takes time to do. And so all I can do, all I can do is show you the tips and tricks and show you certain sections. And with these sessions, we I have a lot more time to do that than we do on TV because obviously TV is a shopping channel. Um, and I know it can be quite frustrating. Oh, he's doing this bit again, he's doing that bit again. You have to sort of go with the flow and try and cover different things in different areas. Um, like, I mean, th these gel pens, I'm sure somebody's done it in the past, but I've never seen it. And by looking at the, the number of um, purchases of the gel pens, I don't think many other people have seen it either. Um, and it just, I suppose that was my moment of clarity. I wonder if, I wonder if. And I tried it. At the end of the day, it was a bit of partial. It could have either worked or it didn't work. And lucky for me, it did work. Um, so let me just show you a couple of things. Um, I have a bit, just have a bit of a breather. Um, who was in the shack last night with Barb and Grace? I'm sure many of you were in the shack with Barb last night at seven o'clock. And if you were, you would have seen, I mean, you've been doodling those lovely twiggy baubles, haven't you? And then what Barb did was last night during the, sh the shack, she launched these two fantastic products. Let me just zoom out now. Oh. Okay, zoom out. So we're going to go that way. So we've got an A6 stamp set with mask and an A6 groovy plate. Okay. So your stamps come with a mask like so. Okay. And your groovy plate is your groovy plate. Now, all profits from the sale of these products are going to be donated to Children in Need, which is taking place this evening here in the UK. And Barbara said that she's going to have like a craft along Christmas party on the 30th of November at 7 p.m. OK. So, I mean, obviously, you, can, you don't have to buy the products to join in. Um, but if you've got them, then you can. Okay. Question, can you use your Pergamano pens like the jelly pens? Yeah, they're exactly the same. They are just a metallic gel pen. Okay. Does the mask fit the groovy plate? Oh, I don't know. Let's have a look. Um, I don't know why, but... They are exactly the same size. The groovy plate is exactly the same size as the stamp. Okay. So, yes, it does, but I don't know why you would. I don't know. But, yes, they do work. Okay. So, 
I got home from the TV this morning. Traffic was quite good. And then I had to go home because I was having my broadband changed at home. And then once that was done, I then came in and got ready. So I had a little bit of time to have a look at the groovy plate. Okay. And can you guess what I did with the groovy plate? Go on, have a guess. You probably know what I did with the groovy plate. This is my, you're going to be sick and tired of these gel pens. Um, I'll stop, I will stop there. It's just that for me, it's exciting um, to do. Yeah. Um, look, I only had time to do one. Look at that. Well pleased. So poison meant the nib in the grip. Yes, you can. That's how it works. Okay. Let me just show you then. Um, we'll just sort of go off on a little tangent. Just but maybe this is the first time you've seen the gel pens in use. So what I'm going to do, let's do this bauble. Have I got enough space on here? Yeah, I've got enough space on here. Okay. So when we're working with the groovy plate, we're still working on the back so that the grooves. And all we're doing is we're replacing the tool with the pen. Okay. Now I'm going to take that there. You're still going to wipe your parchment with your tumble dry sheet. Okay. I'm going to take my groovy tab and hold it in place. And I think for this one, I'm going to go pink. Okay. Right. Pat's lost me. Are we still connected? Are we still in place? Are you there, Pat? I can see you. I think I can see you. I can see your message. Um, oh, there's a lovely Humberta. Good evening, Humberta. Or oh, good morning. There we go. Thank you for your emails into the studio. And um, that's very kind of you. Okay, let's have a look. All is fine. Thank you, Grace. Um, okay, so what you're going to do is you hold the pen more upright, okay, and you find the groove and you press into the groove. Now, if I was doing with this, uh, if I was doing this with the tool, I'd be going faster. But what we need to do is allow the ink to flow from the pen, okay. So what I'm doing, I'm pushing in to the groove. So when I turn this over, if I turn it over this way, you'll see that it's white because we're embossing it. Okay. But there's no rules to say, well, not that I know of anyway, um, that parchment craft or parchment art has got to be raised. Okay, there's no way, I've got a steady hand, but there's no way with my steady hand, could I trace this out freehand, okay, or go over the white line and emboss line. I couldn't do it. I tried it. I tried it the other day when I was playing with the gel pens on what could I do with them. And it was terrible. Okay, and then I thought, oh, I wonder, and I wondered, and I tried it, and it worked. And then now, thinking of it in a, a sort of retrospect and a backwards way, right, okay, I've made a mistake here. I've come out of the groove. Now, if I've come out of the groove with the tool, nothing happens. Okay, but with a pen, it's a pen, so it will, it will mark, it colours your parchment. And I did this the other day on a design that I wanted to show on Groovy Tuesday. 
and I spent the time doing it and I got right towards the end um, and I slipped just like that out of the groove and I thought oh no I've got to do it all again <laughs> I haven't got time to do it again because I want to share it with my friends on Groovy Tuesday so I was thinking right what can I do to get rid of it parchment doesn't like moisture so I can't use water to try and lift it because they are a, a water-based pen okay so i'm thinking would the tumble dry sheet get rid of it tried that that didn't do anything so then i thought okay let's try the eraser pencil so i took the eraser pencil now it's not going to remove what's in the groove remove what's in the groove all it's going to do is remove where it shouldn't be okay and then i thought have i left it too long will the ink be dry um have i still got time to remove it and the answer to that question there is no time limit on how long you can leave it before removing it okay so now get rid of the the dust from the erased pencil and then take it slowly rather than keep jumping out of the groove okay. now what I found earlier was with the um, the needles on this particular line start outwards and come in because if you jump in to the middle it really doesn't matter okay so you start from the outwards and work your way in. Because some of the, the needles are fine, are short. Okay. Now if you go too fast, what you do is you get partial coverage. So then all you do is you just go back in, but just let the ink flow. Okay. Got a bit of a smudge there, but we'll get rid of the smudge afterwards. Not worried about that. Let me zoom. I'm going to come in back on the overhead. I think it might be better on the overhead. On a moment. Ooh. Oops, sorry, a bit too fast. Got a bit carried away there. So it's still, let me just bring it. You're still embossing, but this isn't what we're after. What we're after um, is this side. Okay, so it's just remember, you can't do it with words because the the word <laughs> the words on the groovy plate are spelt backwards. Um, so that's where if you wanted to do the words, you've got to um, you've got to do it the traditional way on from. Uh, where am I going now? Hang on a moment. So, so question from the lovely Pat. How would you store the pens? I would store them upright, like so, so that the nib is at the bottom, so that the ink is always going to sit in the nib area. Okay. Now, if you find, maybe you've already got some um, gel pens already um because many of you will have some of the, the pergamano gel pens already and you may find that when you come to use them that they don't flow so easily okay so there's a couple of things that you can try to reactivate them one you can hang on let me just do this first and i'll tell you i because I really want to explain properly what to do with them. And I need to show you what to do with them rather than tell you what to do with them. Okay, so we're just going to go slow. Now, with the gold, the silver and copper, it has a different, a slightly different nib to them. Okay. And from experience, what I found when using the gold, the 
the silver and the copper in the grooves is that I found I got a better result if I traced out first with the number one tool, okay, and then went in with the gold or the silver or the copper. It seems that for those three pens, it tends to flow better that way. Okay. So there's a tip there for you. I'm almost done on this one. I don't want to rush it because I don't want to. I was doing one earlier and I was rushing it. I kept jumping out of the groove. And in the end, I thought, oh, I can't. It'd be quicker just to redo it um, rather than try and rub out all the jumping out. So that's anything you need to be aware of is that just take your time a little bit more slowly than what you would do with your groovy tool because there is a safety net with the use of the eraser pencil. But if you just take a little bit of time, you'll find that you won't need the eraser pencil. Okay. All right. That's We're almost there on this lovely bauble. So, lovely Gracie has popped up the link to the products if you want to help towards um, children in need um, and have some beautiful designs that many of you have doodled in the shack along with Barb. Okay, pop the lid back on. Now I've got a couple of smudges, so I'm going to take my razor pencil and just tidy up those areas. Okay, brush away the dust. And there we go. There we go, look. And it does look as if they are embossed, but they're not, they're debossed. And the proof is on the reverse. So, I mean, that's quite a nice effect as well where you get that hint of colour around the outside. Maybe that's another technique. Um, Ken said, is there a deboss plate that would allow you to write words with a gel pen? There is indeed, Mr. Ken, and I'm sure you already, <coughs> excuse me, have it in your stash. It is an A6 plate, and I think it's called deboss. Um, I'm sure Gracie could look that up. I'm just having a look at the links. Um, there is, and the reason we did it that way was when we introduced the Groovy Go system for the younger crafter, um, that, so it would make it easier for them to spell out a word the right way around. So you are very correct, Mr. Ken. We do have a DBOSS alphabet, so that would be an alternative for doing that. Okay, so in relation to the um, what to do if the pens don't work that you've had sitting in the craft room for a while, there's a there's a couple of things you can make sure give them a good sort of shake. Okay, take your hands and rub them in your hand like that. Okay, so the heat from your hand can help re. Generate the. I suppose it depends how long um, you've had them. If you've had them for years and years and years, it is possible that they've completely dried out. But if you've only had them sort of a couple of months or so or a year, then try this. Use warmth for your hand to do them. If you're working, take the pen and just scribble onto a piece of card. Give them maybe a little tap on the card, let me just show you. Take a piece of card and just tap like that because what that can do, it can free up the um, ball bearing 
in the nib. Okay, so that can help as well. Scribble, like so, applying a little bit of pressure, that can help unlock the ball bearing in the pen. Another way is um, hot water with the lid on, stand it in a, a glass or a cup of hot water, boiling water. Um, that can help reactivate it. But if that doesn't, then you need to invest in some new pens. Because, say, I mean, I've got gel pens that I've had donkey's years. Um, will they work now? Unlikely. Um, and it's because I probably haven't used them. It'll be because they're in a warm room. So the, it's like anything, any pen you buy, they can dry out, they can evaporate. You can still sort of see it, what color they're meant to be, but the inside is sort of, it's gone. Um, so, um, so yeah, so it's just different things. And often when you're working with the pen, say, the nibs on the, the gold and the silver, so you can see that they're different, okay? So they're still the 0 0.7, but I know when I'm working with the gold, if I go fast, it's quite patchy, okay? So you go slowly and you'll get a nice flow of ink. So if I try and write, hang on, it's not doing it now. Typical, isn't it? <laughs> That's meant to stay Paul. Well, blow me down. Normally, you go fast. I don't know. Maybe because it's warm in the studio. Who knows? There's oh, oh drawing on myself now. There are often solutions on to get them to reactivate, but again, it depends how long you've had them sitting in your craft ash. Okay. Right, so what are we up to? So we've had a look at those lovely um plates and stamps for children in need. Um, I've just had a little bit of a play because the gel pens just bing. Um, so let's go back and have a look at where we're heading now on this piece of artwork from Linda Williams. I'm very close now. Let me zoom out a little bit. Whee! Now I'm going to stay zoomed in and I'm going to come in on this camera. Okay. So. This is a piece of artwork from Linda. So we've had a look, we've, rather than doing the larger design, we used a Pico die cut parchment with the Pico circle um, to do a smaller piece. Then we had a look on the back on how to do some white work with the embossing tools and also with the white pencil to enhance it, okay. Then we had a look at creating the illusion of pico cutting um, in between those areas rather than actually having to pico cut them. So now what I want to do is have a look at that gold paint on the front. I'm gonna, let me bring it in on this one now, number two. So the gold paint on there okay now you won't get this effect with the gel pens it is a completely different effect because it's the pearlescent paint um, is raised the gel pens would be flat i mean if that's what you want then there's nothing wrong with that but what you can see if you can see the different size dots and I can't remember what Linda calls it. Is it dip, dip, dob, 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 that? I can't think what she calls it. 
sounds like dipping, dobbing, dabbing. I can't think what it is. I don't know. It may come to me, or somebody in the room will, will know what Linda calls it. I can't think now. Brain is completely frazzled. But I can show you how to do it. That's the main point, regardless of what it's called. Dib dots. Dib dots. Thank you. Thank you, Maury. That was what it's called. Dip dots. I know it was some. Isn't it funny, um, up at the TV, when I've been showcasing the collection from Linda Williams um, over the past six months, the dotted cross-stitch designs, I know them because I work with them and, and everything else, but when you go up and the presenters, it's funny how the presenters can't remember what they're called and they call them pointed and ditty and dotty and, um, and that was just the same with the dip dots. I knew what they were called, but I couldn't remember what they were called. Dib, dib, dab, dob, dob, dob. Stippling. No, again, it's not stippling. Fip dot, dip dots. It's definitely dip dots. Um, the technique using the um, acrylic, gold acrylic paint, which I'm going to show you now. Okay. Ken, you should have known that. You've watched Linda do it at the um, open days. Right, so what we're going to do, I just need, I'm just taking the waste from my um, groovy tabs. And I'm going to take some of the acrylic paint. And I'm going to give it a shake before I use it. I need to put the whole lid off then. That would have been fun. And I just want to put a little bit. On there okay now a top tip I remember it's just come to me we do several different colors of the um, Pebio acrylic pearlescent paint um, obviously this is gold we also do a pearl color it's like clear okay and you can change the color of it by mixing it with your pencils and you can mix it with your Perga color pens as well. So what you would do is you would scribble out the pencil or the pens onto your mix mat and mix in a little bit of the um, the clear pearl um, Pebio and then you've got your own colors as well. But you'll never get a gold and you'll never get a silver, even mixing with pens and pencils. Just saying. Okay. So now I'm going to sneeze. No, I'm not. Um, where's that gone? Oh, there it is. So I'm going to take my number two tool from the starter kit and I'm going to pick up some of the paint. And then I'm going to dot where it needs to go. I don't know why I'm holding my breath. So you're using the number two tool as an applicator for the paint. Okay. And what happens, I don't know why I'm whispering either. <laughs> um, and what happens is you get that lovely domed effect with the paint, which you wouldn't get with gel pens. Okay. So now, obviously you need to be careful because this will take a little while to dry. So this would be the last thing that you do. Okay. But let me just show you if I take, oh, sorry about that. If I take the that 
this, I mean, I'm sure this is obvious and many people have, have done this, but it just came to me today, or today this afternoon. I'm sure I've seen someone do it. And so what you do, you go, all the way down. So you can do this on your parchment, you can do this um, on your, especially on the black cards, it looks so effective, doesn't it? You could probably spend, uh, just random dots. And as the paint falls away, not falls away, as the paint reduces, you get smaller dots. So if you want smaller dots to start with, guess what you need to do first? Dip, 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 dip. Dot. Dip, dip, dip. Dot. But I quite like this effect. And on card, it will dry quicker because the card is more absorbent. The parchment will just take a little bit longer because it's non-absorbent. So it's definitely the finishing touches. And you also need to be aware of where you are applying it so that you don't lean into it. Because you don't, you really, really do not want to smudge it. I want to try something now. It's just come to me. Okay, I'm going to try something. This may work. Um, I need... Let me go to my pink bag. And I want to try something. I don't know if it's going to work. But you know what? It's five to nine here in the UK. And... I don't mind if it works or if it doesn't work. I do mind if it works. Honestly, I do. <laughs> I just want to try something. So I've taken a Pergamano number two brush. Okay. And I'm going to pick up some of the medicine paint. I'm going to come in these flowers and I'm holding my breath. I don't know why I'm, I need to breathe. Definitely need, I could have gone for saying it's smaller, couldn't I? <laughs> um, don't move the card, Paul. <gasps> what am I leaning on? Why am I leaning on a black card where I've got a black mat underneath? Wow, this brush. Pergamano number two brush. So fine. So, so fine. I've got a random hair there. So, another option for colouring. This is on the front. Um, look at that. I'm going to try something else now. This is where it can all go wrong. So I'm using the paint. I don't know why I'm not breathing. <laughs> if all of a sudden you see my head flat on the thing, it's because I've stopped breathing because I'm trying to concentrate, I don't think I'm going to be able to do this. No. It's not smart enough. Oh, dear. Am I using a dry brush? I am, Pat. Should I be using a wet one? I've never done this before. I just thought I'll give it a go. Should the brush be wet or should it be dry? I don't know. <laughs> I've never done it. I've, I've never seen anyone do it. Um, I've seen Linda doing the dip dots, um, but I've never seen anybody 
do that. Um, so I don't know whether it should be wet or dry. Oh, tell me now, Pat. Put me out of my misery. Um, right, let me put this paint over here so I don't lean in it. So I think that brings us to a nice sort of conclusion, looking at different techniques. One sec. Uh, Pat says she doesn't think um, it should be wet. You could, ah, mapping pen, Christine, right, okay, hang on, we're not going anywhere yet, let me try the mapping pen, glasses, bring the paint back in, oh, I didn't think of that, right, mapping pen, well, bear with, look, it'll <coughs> be in here, I'm sure it will be. Thinking outside the box. Not in there. Who's borrowed my mapping pen? I, no one's borrowed them. I've got them here somewhere. Just that I haven't tied. Here we go. Mapping pen. Sorry about that. I thought they were in my bag, but they're not. Okay. Ooh. Okay, let's have a look. I'd better share it with you as well while I'm having a look. Okay. Mapping pen. Hmm. Mapping pen isn't as smooth as the brush. Um, not that it's scratchy, but there isn't the same sort of flow in relation to colouring in, so to speak. Now, let me try on the line. Yes, I get a better result, I think. Um, with the mapping pen on the solid line, I think. I didn't think about the mapping pen. Can I automatically just think of the, the sticky ink? Mapping pen might not cope with paint, but better with metallic ink. Possibly. Um, it does work. And it... It works. But you just got to have a little bit more patience. And the more steady hand. But for colouring in... I would definitely go with the brush for colouring in. With the paints. Yeah. Definitely, I would say. Right, let's put that to one side. I, I could see, otherwise I'm going to put my arm in it. <coughs> so, you know, I've really enjoyed, I mean, I always enjoy these sessions, but considering that sort of the busy couple of days, uh, you think, oh, I've got to do this, I've got to do this. But it's been so enjoyable to have everybody's company um, and to try different things and just to show off little techniques answer the question go with what people are suggesting um, and see what happens because some people um they went can you do this can you do that um because they're a bit worried about trying it themselves and is it going to be right is it going to be wrong i'm more than happy 
to try something out. Um, so never feel afraid to, to ask a question um, when we're doing these sessions, because if I've got it here, then I'll give it a go and we'll see whether I do it right or whether I do it wrong. I don't know. There will always be somebody out there who'll say, oh no, you could do this, you could do that. That's fine. But I'm happy to try something and see what happens. Um, so thank you ever so much for your company. Thank you to the lovely Gracie for helping me out this evening. Um, popping up all the links, lovely Sue, uh, the lovely design team. I think Jane's already popped off already, so to speak. I don't know if Glynis is still in the room. Yeah, Glynis is still there. Um, don't forget, if you joined halfway through or five minutes towards the end, you can always go back and watch this at any time. If you're not watching live, then I hope you've enjoyed the session. Um, what have we got here from Grace? Um, but I finally enjoyed just showing those little techniques so that you can now go away. And if you want to, you can incorporate those into your artwork. Um, but just a reminder, just a couple of things. Children in need, I think it's still going on. I'm not sure whether it's finished here in the UK. The groovy plate, the stamps, where all profits will be going to children in need. And Barb's going to do a craft along on the 30th of November. Um, what else was there? Metallic pens. Um, yes. So I'm off to switch everything off, lock up, lock up, lock up, love, lock up, and head home for something to eat. And I was going to say an early night, but no, it and off to bed. Um, and then Barb's back in the shack with you on Monday. I'm with you on Groovy Tuesday. Oh, tomorrow, Tina is on TV tomorrow. I nearly forgot at one o'clock and five o'clock um, with her Christmas parchlets. So let's rewind that. Tomorrow, Saturday, Tina, one o'clock and five o'clock, Christmas parchlets and her lovely layering plate mate. Then Monday in the shack with Barb at 10 o'clock. Then Tuesday, Groovy Tuesday with me. And then Thursday and Friday, me and Barb are back up at Crate and Craft again for shows at three o'clock and seven o'clock on Thursday at 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. on Friday. Um, don't forget to check out Barb's blog and also the Clarity Matters blog that Gracie does on a Saturday and a Sunday. And the Sunday always contains a step-by-step -step project from one of the fantastic design team. So enjoy the rest of your evening, morning, afternoon, wherever you are in the world, whatever time you're watching, and I'll see you all very soon. Take care now. Night-night, everybody. <laughs>